Is there really pressure of being a YouTuber? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And today's problem is brought to you by Mr. Casey Neistat. So yesterday, Casey Neistat uh, released a video where he talked about the pressures of being a YouTuber. He talked about his own struggles with being a YouTuber and getting in the spotlight, as well as one of his friends, Sam, who's a fellow YouTuber and how he had to remove himself from Twitter. And I'm pretty much hopping on the bandwagon here because a bunch of other YouTubers are making responses to this. So let's talk about this and let's also talk about mental health because that's what I do, all right? So real quick, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. So please share this video. If you know somebody who would like to be a YouTuber or is trying to be a YouTuber right now, or just anybody who is struggling in the workplace, please share this video with them because I'm gonna talk about a lot of stuff that is very, very important. The first thing I will say before I jump into kind of a ramp and drop some tough love on all of you is that yes, yes, there is pressure of being a YouTuber, absolutely. So uh, Roberto Blake <laughs> actually made a great analogy, maybe because I'm a video game nerd, but he talks about as you continue to level up in your career as a YouTuber, but it's any career, as you level up, as you begin to progress, so does your stress, okay? Like a lot of people don't realize what is on top of that mountain. And no matter what you're doing, no matter what job you have, there's always going to be pressure. There's so much pressure for any job that you, that you get. And the problem is, is that a lot of us from the outside looking in, we always think, oh, you don't have a right. You don't have a right to say you're depressed or say that you're sad or say that you're stressed. You're living the dream. For example, yesterday, yesterday, I just made a video about unconscious bias and uh, this ties right into that. So ask yourself, ask yourself two questions real quick. How many times have you looked at a YouTuber or a celebrity? For example, Justin Bieber had some controversy a few weeks ago or a month ago about how, you know, the life isn't all that glamorous and people are like, oh, whatever, man. This, this is tough down here. We wish you we could be you. We wouldn't have any stress or worries. Like, how many times do you judge celebrities for their depression and their stress, right? But on the same hand, how many times do you go to uh, a fast food restaurant or to a gas station and one of the employees is having a bad day and you're like, oh, you don't have a right to be stressed. Your job is nothing. Like, think about that. Think about that real quick. How many times are you biased because you think that other people, either above or below you, don't have the right to feel stressed or depressed? So real quick, before I get into my tough love type rant, like please, 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 please do me a favor and check out the info cards. I am going to link a bunch of other videos I've done on this topic, like how to be happy at work, as well as the hungry ghost. Like please check out the info cards and watch those videos because they will help you greatly in the workplace. Let's start with me. Do I feel pressure of being a YouTuber? Not really, not really at all. You know why? Six years ago, like six years ago to this date, I was dying, okay? Next month, if I stay clean until June 23rd, I will have six years clean. I went into the hospital with a 10% chance of living. I was 26 years old with congestive heart failure. And let me talk to you real quick about almost dying. Boy, does it put things into perspective really, really well for you. Like a lot of people look at, you know, some of my past and they're like, oh, you poor thing. No, man, I am grateful that that happened because so many things just, psh, they just brush off my shoulders now, right? Like a lot of YouTubers, they talk about the hate in the comment section, like, bro, I almost died. Do you think some internet troll is gonna mess with my day? Heck no. I've watched a ton of responses to Casey Neistat's video, and let me tell you this, 90% of the problem is based on a poor value system. Let me explain because you might be struggling with this too. The first value that's screwed up is valuing the numbers more than anything else, right? You're constantly seeking the next subscriber. You're constantly seeking the, the likes on your video. You're constantly seeking the positive comments. But the problem is, is that we are like that hungry ghost where there's never enough. There is never, ever, ever enough. So our goal of just trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger, we're never going to be satisfied because we're always trying to move upward. And not that there's anything wrong with trying to progress, but but when your value is purely based on the numbers, boom, you're screwing your own mental health. The next one is valuing money and stuff over anything else. Like if you became a YouTuber to make money, stop it. Just stop it right now. Like this is not about that. Like 
to, to become a famous YouTuber making a full-time living purely based on YouTube is ex one of the most difficult things. It's like saying like, oh, I'm gonna be a famous actor or oh, I'm gonna be a professional basketball player. Like, yeah, some people do make it, but the struggle is real. So if you only got into this, based on the fact that you're trying to get money so you can buy stuff that you don't even need, your value system is really screwed up. Now, don't get me wrong, we all got bills to pay. You know what I do? I work a full-time job on top of all of the content that I make for all of you beautiful people, okay? Because I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this because my value system is aligned with helping other people out as much as possible. By the way, in case you didn't yet, check the info card because one of the videos in there talks about that. And the last value that got you screwed up is valuing the opinions of other people who don't matter. I touched on this a minute ago, but let's dive a little bit deeper in this. Like, I really hate to give you this tough love real quick, but welcome to the internet. Welcome to the internet. Maybe my youth growing up like prepared me for this, I don't know, but I've been an online gamer since I was a kid, you know? The internet is filled with trolls, is filled with people who are just gonna say hateful things. And like, man, I wish you could see me as I read some of these comments, I laugh so hard. One of my biggest videos is about opiate withdrawal and I talk in it about my prescription uh, painkiller addiction. And this guy, he comments, he's like, this guy's so full of it. There's no way he didn't use heroin. He must've used heroin. People just say that. Like, I just started laughing. Like I sent a text message that you can see right here to my friends with just a bunch of laughing, crying emojis. Like what? What? Why would I lie about that? Like my entire channel is based on me being fully transparent with all of you and sharing my experiences. So again, check in with yourself. Why are you valuing people's opinions so, so, so much? Like a lot of this stems from a lack of self-love, okay? Uh, so much of it, because when you love yourself, when you know that your, your moral compass and what you're doing is the right thing to do, the opinions of other people who don't matter really start to diminish, okay? If you would like to learn more about self-love and compassion, I highly, highly, highly recommend this book by Sharon Salzberg called Real Love. I will put a link to it in the description below. Like, please check it out. Lastly, lastly, like, <laughs> I try Try not to talk about this too much, but you know what? Screw it, all right? Like, ask yourself real quick, how many YouTubers do you watch who have at least one video where they talk about mental health and how important it is and how we don't talk about it enough on YouTube? Ask yourself, how many of those same YouTubers share any mental health uh, channels on YouTube? Right? Like, I look at it constantly. I am blown away at how many YouTubers are like, mental health is important, mental health is important. They don't share any resources um, like therapy, they don't share any resources like suicide hotlines, unless it was after the Logan Paul thing. Like, it is crazy the attention span for people when it comes to mental health. That's why I tell all of you to share these videos because not only is it Mental Health Awareness Month, but it needs to be Mental Health Awareness Year. Like, we need to start putting that information out there. But people People care about mental health and it's very, very short lived. Like one of my favorite YouTubers about a month ago when Bobby Burns made his video about burnout, he made a post on, on Twitter about how YouTube needs to do something. We need to talk about mental health more, da, 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 da. And I replied, I'm like, bro, I never see you share anything about mental health. What are you doing to help it? That's one of the million reasons why I say we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. There are so many people out there who are just, they're wired to complain, but they don't take any action steps forward. Like, it's it's great, like Philip DeFranco, he's been using BetterHelp Online Therapy. By the way, I have a link to that in my description too. Like, I'm glad that Philip DeFranco has millions of viewers and he is promoting uh, online therapy, even though, you know, obviously Philip DeFranco gets a cut of it because he has a, a, an affiliate link, but like, it's so great that millions of people are seeing him talk about how he's uh, going through therapy. In Roberto Blake's video, he talked about how he started therapy too. That's beautiful. Um, I was also watching uh, part of the H3H3 podcast and he was talking about antidepressants presence and H3A3 has been stu struggling with depression for a little while now and like one thing that I'm curious about him is, is he actually taking any actions? Like basically what he says, I'll link it down below. He says he's not taking the antidepressants because he needs to try other things first, like going and working out, eating better, you know, doing things that make him happy. He wants to try the more holistic methods before the antidepressants. But one thing I would caution all of you is, is that 
When you're depressed, it's hard to even do those things. So sometimes those medications can give you that little boost that you need just to get out and start working out, start eating better and doing the other things that naturally create those neurotransmitters. So if any of you big YouTubers happen to stumble across this video, like stop talking about it and be about it. Share mental health content. I don't even care if it's my channel, like heck, Go share Katie Morton's video. She's the biggest mental health YouTuber on the platform and I never see any of you share any of her videos. So again, please check the info cards if you haven't yet. I have a ton of videos about, you know, how to de decrease your stress and depression at work and Please share this video if you know anybody trying to be a YouTuber or is just having a difficult time at work because I really think like if we can get our value systems in line, like we'll, we'll be a lot, lot, lot happier. It's not even that I think about it. it. It is scientifically proven about how we need to readjust our value systems. But anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Make sure you click that little round subscribe button. And if you wanna check out some more content, you can click or tap on one of those thumbnails, all right? So thanks again so, so much for watching. Get your value system in line and I'll see you next time.